Well, it's happened. I have officially found the weirdest premise for a movie ever. I've seen many strange premises over the years. Transforming cars save humanity, romantic movies set against the backdrop of great tragedy, Charlize Theron wanting to have sex with Seth Rogen, but this one takes the cake. There have been many gangster movies over the years. Some good, some repetitive, some bad, some weird. Hey, forget about it. But by and large, they have similar parts. Guys acting tough, lots of violence, and ultimately a tragic end. Very adult themes. So what would happen if all that was under a slightly different light? This is 1976's Bugsy Malone. This movie tells the story of a Prohibition-era boxing promoter who is caught up with the mob while trying to get his new girlfriend a singing career, roughly evoking the exploits of gangsters Al Capone and Bugs Moran. And we can't hide it any longer. Brace yourself. Here's the gimmick. Yep. The horror of Mafia-era Prohibition as played by children with whipped cream Tommy guns. I'll give everyone a second to pick their jaws up. Why? And we're back! So yeah, a bunch of children in a speakeasy story. Basically Epstein's paradise. And yes, this premise does grow tiring. Oscar, I'm back! I'll give you one more chance, you hear me? Really? Quickly. But hidden within this are some points worth watching. For one, there are some decent songs. Yes, as if this movie couldn't get any weirder, it's a musical. By and large, they're sung a little too precociously, weirdly by adult actors coming out of children's mouths. We took the easy way out. But some are okay. They are bound to compare me to Fred Astaire when I'm done. And this song, as lip synced by a fresh off taxi driver, Jodie Foster. Now that we're all on a registry of some sort, it's a good time for me to ask everyone to subscribe by hitting that button in the bottom right. It'll make our inevitable defense attorney fees much easier to handle. But yeah, Jodie Foster's in this, and Scott Bayo is the lead. And this movie at least shows that there is something there. For the former. So this is show business? And while we're at it, there was some other talent involved in this. The score was done by Paul Williams, who would go on to win an Oscar that year for Evergreen from A Star Is Born. And the director decided this would not be his most surreal movie, and went on to direct Pink Floyd's The Wall, as well as other classics like Fame and Mississippi Burning, the latter of which you can clearly see the tonal influences of Bugsy in. Did you smile when the bodies are covered over? Did you? But is this movie, despite some inventive scenes like a high-speed pedal car chase and a weirdly dramatic mafia hit with pies worth watching? Boss, give a guy a break. Get him! Honestly, I wouldn't fault you if you only made it 10 minutes. It's a cute gimmick, but like any grade school play, you'll be looking for an exit after the novelty wears off. How do you allow this to happen? Roxy was one of my best! But if you can make it through, then you're in for a fun, subversive interpretation of a genre that takes itself way too seriously. Uh, what does that mean, boss? You can't speak a tongue! No, boss, I'm Jewish. Then read the translations! Oh. Oh, well, this is good. If you have kids, it's safe to watch with them. And if you have friends, it's great to prank them with. Tell them Ebert gave this three and a half stars. And, at the very least, it makes for a great double feature with the untouchables. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. Thanks for watching! Once again, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy, or a like, or a comment, and let me know if you found anything cool on your quarantine binges. Stay safe, and happy trekking through the wilds of Amazon. Tomorrow.